Welcome back to what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. I'm Vincent A. Lancy. I'm Adam Nasir. Whether you're already an entrepreneur or looking to start your journey tomorrow or just someone who needs a little extra motivation to get through the day, this is the perfect podcast for you. Each week, I will interview a different entrepreneur from across the globe. I will continue to offer episodes in all industries to provide you with many different perspectives. You never know which motivational journey will inspire you most. Each guest will take you through their story and help you learn from their successes and lessons learned. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate the show five stars and continue listening by subscribing. My guest on the show today is recording from Ukraine. He is a real estate investor who specializes in flipping homes. Like most investors, he was always spinning his wheels, throwing money blindly into marketing and looking for the next big thing. This led him to found and create Smarter Contact, which has helped him, along with thousands of other house flippers and wholesalers, generate more leads while decreasing their market spend. Very important for all businesses. He tremendously changed the real estate game when he founded Smarter Contact, which is an SMS tool to dominate your market. This software works so well because most people throw your direct mail pieces right in the garbage and it isn't personal, but you, and like many people, we hate junk mail. In fact, only about 10% of direct mail gets opened. So this led him to creating this wonderful, wonderful platform. Studies show that text messages have a 99.8% open rate. Imagine being able to 10 times, 20 times, even 50 times your ROI by sending out a simple custom text. I could go on with his intro for a long time, so allow me to introduce Adam Nazir. Adam, thank you so much for coming on the show. Absolutely. Pleasure to be here. I'm very honored, and I'm going to try to share a wealth of information from my career as both a real estate investor and entrepreneur, as a, a software uh, owner, um, everything, a, a long chasm of my experience. I'm going to try to share as much as I can here with you guys, and at any level, whether you're beginning your journey as an entrepreneur mid-level, high-level, I think that there's a lot that I can try to share and, and bring value to you guys today. So Adam, please introduce yourself to our listeners a little further and preview your story without giving too much away of your entrepreneurial journey. Sure, sure. Absolutely. So guys, I am a true and true entrepreneur. Uh, I have been uh, in the realm of entrepreneurship my whole life for the last uh, 15 years, I've always tried to find an opportunity. I'm the kind of person where, you know, if I see something, I'm always thinking about how I can improve on it, how I can make it better, and really how to get the most value out of anything that I do. Uh, I started out at McDonald's to buying and selling cars, flipping houses, and then I learned the software game, and that's when it took off. But, you know, in, in reality, I'd, I'd consider myself the, the Rocky of entrepreneurship. I've tried everything. I've gone through every single lesson learned and I've turned a lot of stones. And my approach is always to try to figure out how to um, think the next level of everything you're trying to do, solve big problems in, in anything you're doing. Yeah, very similar to me. I feel like I've tried everything as well. I always wanted to get that new perspective from about 10 trades and construction to restaurants to online teaching, you name it. I'm always a learner because I know how far it'll progress you. But I am excited to learn your journey. Let's dive into the big five. On each episode, my guest and I go over these five questions to help you, the listeners, learn what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. Are you ready to go, Adam? Let's rock and roll. Let's do it. Awesome. So when did you realize that you either weren't happy with what you were doing or you needed some kind of change to truly start your entrepreneurial journey? Please share your story. We all have different times in our life where we have these big aha moments. But the most recent one, right, where I had one was, you know, I was buying and selling a lot of homes, um, doing fix and flip. And I had an operation where I, I bought and sold about 170 homes in two years uh, nationwide. And, you know, in that process, you're, you're dealing with contractors and, and you know, all types of uh, trade labor. It, it just the moving parts in that business from acquisition to sale, just the, the, um, sales process is so insanely long and you can imagine that things go wrong. You have, um, a lot on your shoulders and a lot of responsibility. Um, so on, on a business like that, and you multiply it by 170 houses, the level of stress that comes along with that business is quite high. And that's when I thought to myself, I already had a software that I was building on the side. How cool would it be if I can actually build a service that 
uh, that can help people as opposed to, you know, just going through and trying to uh, flip the house and building a service that could actually help people on a subscription basis. Well, I think it's definitely very innovative. You have to kind of pivot to where the market's going. I have a real estate license as well. And we started doing, I got involved in two flips and they both went wrong. The stress that came with that was outrageous. So maybe you can help people in other industries when stress reaches that peak. What are some things you did to kind of bring you back down to earth? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, humans are emotional beings. And one thing that we have to do is learn to be able to control any emotion. You know, you know, at this stage of my career, anything can we can have, you know, you're going to have good days. Most days it's pretty good, but, you know, we really have fairly stressful days but in a in a day where i can imagine everything goes wrong the first thing your body and your mind is going to say is to react but the appropriate response is to respond take a second take a minute take an hour and think about all the decisions because reacting emotionally to any problem is never the right decision so so just having a, a thoughtful perspective taking time to consider all your options and responding with, with intelligence, not so much with emotion. That's an incredible answer and you had a great value to everybody listening on. But since you have jumped on this entrepreneurial journey, Adam, what would you say one or two of the most difficult parts are for you as an entrepreneur? The biggest challenge, I mean, right now at this stage, it's all like, you know, it's not about, the way I look at my business now is it's not like, what do I have to do to move the needle forward? It's who do I need to hire? Uh, and that's where I'm at right now in, in the business side, we're just hiring all the smartest and right people. So the biggest challenge is, is, is where to find the best talent, hiring the best talent. Um, I've, I'm very fortunate because I, I kind of give you guys a preview, but I live in, in uh, Eastern Europe right now. So we have a technology company and um, development costs are considerably lower here because we were, you know, planning on hiring developers in the U S we're, we're paying 70, dollars an hour or more uh and here we're they're 25 dollars an hour it's a wow. considerable cost saving so so the, one of the biggest challenges is um bringing the right people into your organization and within our organization we have an amazing culture and this is why they stick around not only do they stick around but they're loyal they'll do anything for our business because they believe in in the culture that we've created within the company they believe in me as a leader. They believe in, in everything that we're building collectively on a day in day basis. Um, so that's number one. Um, the second challenge, staying on top of industry trends. I mean, I, you know, there's always something changing. Um, Very the biggest point. Yeah. differentiator for us is just innovation. You know, I'm always thinking about like, I look at the competition, I scan everything and I'm always thinking, how can I be three steps ahead of everybody else? So, so my biggest challenge as a, as a CEO, not only keeping my company intact, hiring, doing the management, you know, making sure to listening to our customers, but innovating is something that is a constant when, the, you know, you've gotten to this place of innovating so much and you have to keep innovating. So getting yourself in that place is, is probably the second challenge that I, that I would say. I think those are both incredible pieces of advice. You can't stay stagnant. Things are always changing. And especially in this technology age we live in. I mean, you can even look at Apple computers every year. This crazy, crazy technology is Amy. considered outdated. <laughs> yeah. $1,500 yeah. you just spent is already outdated. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. new one's coming out next month, right? <laughs> yeah, so I love those points because they're true to any business. But looking back across your career, your life, your Adam, what is one of your greatest failures or lessons learned? And what did it teach you? Why is it still stuck with you all the way up until today? I love failures. It's such a neg it's such a negatively thrown word. I love failure. It's uh, defined me in my career. It's defined everything that I am. Because if you can, you know, I'll give you guys a quick uh, history lesson on me. But I, I I'm at a point now where I can get anything I want. I live my dream life. I you know I outside of having a hundred million dollars in the bank, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty wealthy. Uh, not, and not just financially. I mean, in, other, in all areas of my life, but there were times in my life where I wasn't. Um, but I would attribute my success today, um, and business success and personal success uh, in all areas of, of personal life and business to the failures that you go through, especially as an entrepreneur, 
because as an entrepreneur, you're tried, you know, this man, I, you, you're tried way more. You hit, you get the hit, you get the no and rejection, you get the door slammed in your face. What specific one, what specific failure? Um, learning to deal with people is the greatest strength that I can, I can say. Cause at, when I was 21, 22, I didn't, I wasn't good with people. I was emotionally shy and not, you know, timid. And now I could talk to anybody. So developing that skill, you can get people to believe in your, in your vision, in your ideas, in your culture. You can get people to come work for you. You can convince people that your product is a greater solution for them. It might or might not be, but you, you can sell better. So the ability to deal with people is number one, um, the greatest lesson that I learned over a 10 year, the last 10 years, 15 years. Yeah. I love how you're putting so much emphasis on people. These are moving parts to your business that if you don't pay attention to them, you're living proof of how it can make or break your business. And it certainly helped you where now we're running a seven figure business, but I do know you're a career learner like myself. You love to learn and grow. You always talk about how you want to stay a few steps ahead. If you could sit down and have a conversation to learn from any entrepreneur, dead or alive, who are we going with? I mean, it, it's, it's amazing the accomplishments, the business accomplishments of, of Elon Musk. It's just out of this world. Uh, and I study him like no other. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I just really impressed on a business level what he's been accomplished, but not so much just on a business level, but really just on an innovation level. Um, so I've, I've actually crafted my goals as, as a CEO of my own tech company of wanting to do the same things. I've kind of modeled kind of what his design is. It's like basically I want to focus on product design, building out our products, making sure the vision is there. Um, leading our team and building the vision. So um, yeah, long, short answer, Elon Musk, without any doubt, is definitely my uh, uh, person I would spend some time with in, in business. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to take it a step further there for you. If you had to pick the place where this meeting could go down, where would you want to meet up? <laughs> Space. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if that's possible. The VIP trip up there? Yeah, yeah, we'll go fly up to the moon and have, have coffee, talk business, and come back. <laughs> well, I got to even take it one step further because I know how much you like to learn. If you could ask him one thing, what are you delving into with him? How do we change the world? Uh, that's my goal. That's my driver personally. I mean, obviously, that's for him too. He's doing that. It's not just monetary. I mean, I, I'm building my business for profit to make money as well. But my, my, my ultimate purpose is to change the world as well with the resources that I create. So um, yeah, with somebody like that, that's a world mover on such a large scale, that's, that would be the conversation. Yeah, I love it. Me as well. I'm looking forward to paying it forward. But let's look into the future here. I know you're future oriented because your entrepreneur to speak with was Elon Musk. Where do you see yourself in these entrepreneurial endeavors in the future? Let's do one year and five years. One year from today, what are we seeing from you? One year from today, is, you know, we're seeing this business uh, that I've, I've passionately built. I mean, this is my, to kind of give the audience some perspective. You know, when you're building a business, it has, you have to be all in. You have to be all in every little detail you have. To, I, I love this, ba this business, like it's my own baby. Yeah. You know, and I breathe it, I eat it, I sleep it. So much so that I haven't really disclosed this on, on, the, on the show yet, but I moved across halfway across the world to be with my team and build out a powerhouse that's going to dominate the entire industry, what we built. So we're currently rebuilding our platform to be a juggernaut within the industry. And we're not going for fifth place. Uh, we're, we're going for a really, really big number here. Um, and we have every tool we need. We have the resources, we have the tool, we have the, the capital, we have everything that we, 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 we could possibly want. Um, so in a year, uh, we're looking at, I mean, at, at, minimum, at minimum 3X your current revenue, um, closer to 5X. Right now, I'm not looking for any like philanthropic or other goals. Like I'm laser focused on this business until I exit. Um, yeah. You know, and then once I exit this business, maybe it won't be in 12 months. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to sell it anytime soon. Uh, but 
three years, five years, we can look at something else. But I'm, I'm laser focused on this one right now. Yeah, I'm excited. That's going to be great to witness. And now once you do move on from this company, you do exit, you're thinking maybe three, five years. What's next for you in five years? Um, yeah, so I, I've, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this. Uh, take three months, live on a boat, chill, <laughs> you know, do that thing, enjoy. And then, you know, as an entrepreneur, you know, I've, you've talked to so many entrepreneurs, you know, what's great is you get a lot of insight talking to people much older than you. You know, um, you know, I'm only, I'm 32. I'm a young guy, you know, people that are forties, fifties that have already sold businesses. And if you're like them, your mind is always geared a certain way. You can only sit on a beach for so long. So my goal is, you know, to leave my, my, my personal goal is to leave this earth giving more than I took. So we all take, 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 take. I want, I want, especially early on in their lives when you're teens, younger, teens, twenties. And then as you start to get everything that you possibly, I mean, I have most things that I want. Um, now it's like, how do I give? And and, um, I have some ideas about how I want to do it, but the goal is to find something that uh, aligns with your story. Right. So Vincent, maybe there's two or three things in your story growing up that affected you. Maybe you didn't have a dad growing up or you didn't, you maybe, single mother or um, didn't have an opportunity, didn't learn from the right people, you know, whatever it is, finding a place that you can help and using your skills. Cause you know, um, without sounding pretentious, I have a God given ability to be able to build systems, solve problems in a very high level. Um, so I want to use that in combination with my cash and my resources to solve a very big problem um, in, in the world. Most likely it's going to be around helping young people around the world that aren't necessarily born in America that want to have the opportunities to, to help their family. That's, that's most likely what it's going to be. Well, you just definitely certainly inspired me and I'm looking forward to your continued success, Adam. And I think it's a great time for the spotlight story on each episode after the big five, I share an entrepreneurial journey to inspire our listeners. And I'd love to hear your take on it for today's episode. We have Ryan Sarant. In 2008, the subprime mortgage industry collapsed and Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy. 24-year-old Saran began his first day in the real estate business. And I chose this article, obviously, Adam, because you had tremendous success in real estate. So he created the Saran team, which has sold over $1.6 billion worth of real estate in the last two years alone. In 2017, his team completed $838 million in closed sales between Brooklyn and Manhattan which was roughly 500 million more than the number two ranked team in New York. This team has an unprecedented list to sale ratio of 94.5%. As an entrepreneur, he keeps going and growing as a frequent guest on real estate segments, such as 2020, CNN, CNBC, and the likes, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, and all of those, and an active and official contributor to Forbes, where he writes columns on real estate sales and branding. But many people do know him from Bravo's Emmy-nominated show. He's the star of Million Dollar Listing New York. And since that first season of the show, his team has sold billions of dollars in real estate on national TV. He took it a, fe- a step further in 2018, started his own entertainment and media company called Surant Media Group, SMG. Adam, what do you like best about his story? Courage. Courage. You know. Uh, I love people that have courage to do whatever they want to do and that have that ambition, they have an idea and they go out and they, they take action. That's the number one thing. There's so many people that, Oh, I want to be a real estate investor one day, or I want to be a tech entrepreneur. There's so many of those, but Ryan in this example saw a vision. He had an idea. And he went all out to make his dreams a reality. And that's the difference. Like that is literally the difference. It's the courage to go do something like, you know, I'm living across the world. Like most people are like, Oh my God, are you crazy? You live in Ukraine. Do people like hang out and, you know, like hang out with AK 47s and drink vodka all day long. (laughs) Like They have no idea what it's like being here. And they're like, be careful. Don't do this. Stay safe. Stay at home. It's coronavirus is going on. No, don't start a business. Don't hire. I doubled my employee count. We, we, 
added like six or seven employees just in the last six months since coronavirus started. And most people just, they listen. They, they're okay being small, playing small, playing it safe. Um, so if you want success like Ryan, and Ryan's a super successful guy, um, just takes courage. I really admire people with that, that, you know, men, women, just all people that have the courage to go do what they want and they go for it and they're okay with the risk of failing. Adam, you hit it right in the head. Thank you so much for coming on today. I know our listeners are going to see all the value you brought on. I love how no matter what job you were speaking of, it outlined hard work, persistent, and dedicating yourself, selling 170 homes and flipping, going to something less stressful, but you were passionate about highlighting the points of fully dedicating yourself to your idea. You moved across the world. You didn't get discouraged during coronavirus. You actually doubled your business and how you really emphasized company culture the people around you, those are all incredible lessons for everybody. So I think it's a good time for the last word. And I do this on my other podcast series, which is a mental health break with Vincent A. Lancey too, because I want the listeners to really get to know my guests. Is there something that you would like to share with everybody listening on that we did not touch on yet today? Well, Vincent, that's, you know, thank you for that. And, um, you know, it, it really means something to me to help, um, especially people that that, that haven't really made it yet, that haven't really gotten a taste yet. Maybe you've been climbing for a while, you haven't hit, or you're just about to start. Just remember and, and ask yourself what the definition of failure is. Just because you fail doesn't mean you're, you're done. It's not like a video game. You, you, you fail and then you're game over, you're out of lives. You know, failure is something that I've experienced more than anybody, most people that I know. I've failed so much. And it's not, it's, you probably think of that cliche quote, I failed more times than anybody else, and that's why I'm successful. But it's true. <laughs> it's so true. Like, go fail. I'm not saying go take every single dollar in your entire savings or your, from your bar from your parents or something, but go fail. Because win or lose, you come, even if you lose, the worst case is you grow thick skin from that, and you come back for the second time even better with better ideas and more skills. So... That's that's big one is is failure is okay. We see as failure as a permanent thing, as an indefinite thing, and no, it's it's temporary, and it actually gives you, you know, it gives you a lot of uh, growth opportunities from that if, if you do. Um, and then the, and the second one is just have courage. You know, so many people are trying to live somebody else's life. They want to be, you know, uh, a, a, an accountant because their dad was an accountant, or they want to be a lawyer because their mom and dad said so, or they want to go to college because, you know, whatever. Live your life. Like, live your life. We're going through the craziest year of our lives right now. 2020 is nuts. And it's more than ever the time to live your own dream. Okay, your dad doesn't approve of you, or your friends don't approve of you. Screw them. <laughs> man, that's right, man. Your opinion matters. Listen to yourself. Follow your own um, and just have the courage to go after anything that you want in your life because all the best things in life are on the other side of that. Yeah, I appreciate that perspective. You have to do what you're happy about. Granted, I had the MBA, the finance. Parents would have liked to see me take a more secure, safe route. And there's nothing wrong with that route for certain people, but there is a lot to be said for doing it your own passions, doing it your way, the satisfaction, the joy I have every single morning I wake up. Sunday is not an off day for me. My off day may be Tuesday this week. My mental health day may be a different day. So I like the way you put that. Would you mind please sharing your professional social media website or ways for our listeners to follow your endeavors? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. If you guys want to follow me, the best way is on Instagram. I'm always dropping gems on there. And it's all about living your life on your own terms. So much that I named my handle that. So it's life on your terms, underscore life on your terms, underscore. And, you know, my life is exactly that, you know, living overseas, living in a different country, running a, a multi seven figure business um, and uh, having fun and enjoying life um, on my terms. So it's life on your terms, underscore is where you can find me on Instagram. Thank you for sharing that. Everybody be sure to check out his content. I've seen it and it is worth the follow. I promise you that. But it is social media time for the show and we are on whichever platform you like to use. We're at what it's really like to be an entrepreneur on LinkedIn, at your favorite morning podcast on Instagram and Facebook and at 
podcasts by Lancey on Twitter. So you have updates from this show and a mental health break with Vincent A. Lancey. If you check out my books, DM me. I would love to hear from you all. We have Mr. Lancey Talks Mental Health, Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption, and How to Transform Your Mindset When the Norm is Changed. All are on my website now, which is vincentalancey.com. And as always, I will end the show with a quote that inspired me, and know it will for you too. This one is from Ryan Surratt, the TV star and entrepreneur from today's Spotlight Story. He said, when people think you're crazy, it's just because they don't have the courage to do what you're doing. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you all on the next episode of what it's really like to be an entrepreneur.